On this episode, one of our own employees, Josh Patton, is back on the show this spring sharing his technical knowledge about planters. Ben gives an update on what's been going on in the local area for planting conditions, and we also talk about some recent and upcoming weather events. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe, episode number 37, season 2. Today we have our regulars. We have Tommy and we have Ben and we have Turk, but we also have a, a special guest. And uh, this special guest actually works at Mershman Seeds uh, and had a uh, previous life as being a planter and combine expert. Did repairs in the field uh, for over 20 years and it's uh, Josh Patton. Josh also, what he does at Mershman Seeds is, if you are getting anything shipped out of West Point, Iowa, he's the one that made sure it's perfect. In other words, he runs uh, all the receiving, uh, unloading, and uh, runs the machines, the cleaners, and the treater, and uh, he's got a big, big responsibility. He's the number two guy in our organization outside in the seed plant. So we brought Josh in today to kind of uh, pick his brain a little bit about what's going on uh, right now with farmers and planters and what are some of the things that he learned over the last uh, 20 years, 20 plus years, when he went out on a field complaint or a field problem with a planter. We're also going to put up a video of Josh uh, that we did about a year ago uh, in our conference room talking about planters and planter plates and whatnot. So there's some additional information that's hands-on, you might say, so you can take a look at it. And the link will be on this uh, on this episode today. So, Josh, I'm gonna just ask you a question. I said, uh, you know, so right now we've had farmers in the field planting. We got some that are waiting to plant. Let's start with the guys that are in the field. And you typically got a call, right? You got a call. What were what were some of the things? That, well, and before you jump into that, just give us a little background of you know what what you what you did. Okay. I was on the road all the time. I was always started new planters. Uh, uh, as soon as I got a call on an old planter, I was the first one out and and kind of walked them through it. Something most of the time it's pretty simple fix, but sometimes you get in some pretty pretty gnarly stuff there once in a while. But you but your experience has uh, been with uh, what what planter, what brand? Uh, of Red and blue, and then I've worked on some green ones too. Okay. You know, and I run a green one yet, so. Okay. So when you went out on that problem, uh, you know, where the guy's been in the field and he says, this thing's not planting right, uh, what were the number one things that, that, that normally came into play? Well, the biggest problem I've seen is all these aftermarket add-ons guys buy to put on their planters, like these Keaton seed firmers and that. Um, guys don't keep them adjusted and they think they're in dry ground but you get down two inches and it's muck and that keaton seed firmer will drag the seed through the field and your spacing is not going to be there uh, guys need to really check that 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 keaton seed firmer will get a uh, sticky stuff on it and it'll start dragging that seed you'll have two here and you have a big gap and and they blame it on the planter well the planter planted it right it's the aftermarket add-on stuff that the just conditions made, just weren't right. The for conditions weren't there, and they weren't watching that. Anything else on spacing that you have seen? What what can cause spacing problems? Spacing will be drive chains. Uh, everybody says they shear pins and and uh, they blame it on a bearing dragon. Well, that's true. It can, but nine times out of ten, you got a stiff spot in the chain, and it'll come around that sprocket, and it'll jump. And guys don't realize that they need to change the chains, replace them every so often, not not just out of sight, out of mind, and forget about them. Well, you know, and, you know, talking to a lot of farmers that you know that, that farm makers, they, they said the the planters today, they you have to do a lot of maintenance on them. In other words, they're not designed to last ten years without maintenance. In other words, it seems like most of the farmers I talk to say, you know, like every other year, you've got to replace a lot of parts, a lot of chains, always. If, if that planter sees a thousand acres a year, I recommend changing the chains out every two years. You know, you know, just so run through that list. Out. Run through that list for me, Josh. Of every other year, what what do you look for on a red or a blue planter? What what is your list of things that you typically change? And then every other year, drive chains. Uh, red and blue both got drive chains that run 
that turn the meters. Uh, if that planter sees a thousand acres a year, change them every two years. And one big thing is that guys throw out there too, they like to oil them chains up through the season. That's a definite no-no. Do it, do it one time before you start out because otherwise that chain's gonna look like a ball of mud and then it climbs the sprockets. Guys don't understand that, but I mean. So that affects the, your drop rate then? The drop rate, yeah. Yep, it slows starts, it down or speeds it up depending upon which yep, which and uh, start rocket throwing that that seed around. Um, that's the biggest thing, and then um, the depth guys got got to check their depth every year because that disc openers and stuff wear, you know, through the year. You know, just double check it. Just because you don't change it, plan that depth last year, and let's go out and do it. Well, ground conditions change, and you know, you're, everything does wear in time. So your disc openers, you know, uh, how, how long do they last? I mean, at what point, how much wear do they need to have before you should replace them? The Kinsey's and the Deers, they're all 15 inches brand new. When they get down to 14 and a half, it's time to change them. The red ones are 14 inches, and they get down to 13 and a half, they got to be changed. So basically you lose a half inch off. Half inch of that. Out. That and you lose off your, your sharpness too. Sure. You know, don't open the ground up for no-till. Turk, you have a lot of experience with planters. Do you have some questions for Josh? Well, one of the comments uh, Josh was talking about the um, disc openers, we used to uh, replace one, one side or the other every other year. So we always had at least one blade that was brand new and sharp, uh, especially if you're no-tilling, you've got to cut that, that stubble. If you're not cutting that stubble or whatever that, is that's in front of that you're pushing it down in the in the trench and now you've got um, um, problems as far as what that depth is i i like josh is uh, uh talking about the keaton seed firmers that getting that big knob of dirt on if you got a knob of dirt on your, those keaton seed firmers you got a problem so there's something that isn't wrong the other thing that that josh uh, we might mention is having your closing uh Closing wheels adjusted correctly because if they're not if they're not running uh, parallel to that slot, you're not closing properly. If a lot of times I've seen guys having one closing wheel running in the slot, one running clear off the side. You might comment on that. On your sidewall compaction, on your gauge wheels, on your planters, guys don't they just adjust the springs or the hydraulics or the pneumatic pressures, and they don't get out. And I call it a kick test. When it's down, you pull it ahead and just kick them. If you can budge that gauge wheel just a little bit, you're okay. But if it's rock solid, you got to back it off. It's just you're just packing the sidewalls just tighter than heck, and and, you, and it's hard on the planter. You need to back some of that off. But uh, they need to get out and just do a kick test, and then feel, it changes from field to field too. I mean, you got different dirts, that soils types out there. I mean. Guys need to get check that every so often, and like Turk was saying, yeah, you can on your on your closing closing your trench. Um, yeah, you always check that, um, and that's the same thing with your closing wheels too. You you don't want them too tight, but all you need is enough to close the trench. Is all you need. But uh, and then most of the planters are eccentric on the back to get that to follow the center of that trench. And that's all adjustable there. So, so there's a little bit of science and a little bit of art to yes. setting a planter, isn't it? Yes, there is. Um, well, let's let's talk a little bit about bean planting because uh, I know that one of the things with the Kinsey planters, um, uh, they're great planters. Mercer Seeds owns a Kinsey planter. We love our Kinsey planter. Um, but if you know if, if you don't get that right plate size for the bean size, what can go wrong? What what do you typically see goes wrong when somebody's trying to use the smaller plate when they got bigger beans. And this year, we have some bigger beans, you know. A lot of times, that monitor will, it'll underplant. The planter itself will literally underplant. Say you're shooting for 140,000 and you're only getting 100,000 on because of that plate. And then, then you go back and look in the ground, okay, let me, say there are 2,100 seeds per pound that you're trying to plant and you still got the 60 cell plate in. You go back and dig, all you got is bean meal in that in that trench. 
it just it can't load the cells and it's just trying to load trying to load and it finally just grinds that bean up inside there and that's i know the kenzie book always says 2200s and larger beans is when you need that blue plate but that's that don't hold true especially on seed beans 2500s and down is when you need to start using that blue plate um Otherwise, I mean, it'll plant 25s, no problem, but it, you will see some cracked seed coats because it's trying to load that big bean. And if it, if you got 2500s, use that blue plate and adjust your, your rate down, if it's over planting, to what you're shooting for. I mean, just to protect your beans, you know. I know exactly what you're talking about, uh, Josh. You know, uh, you know, when we do our cleaning of our seed. You know, obviously we use certain size screens and we, we, we take a, a, a segment. You know, we get rid of the very, very large, we get rid of the very, very small, and we take that segment. And in that segment, there is some variability. So when we say it's 2,200 seeds per pound, there's probably some 2,000 seeds per pound in there. Not very many, but a few. Yep. And there's probably some uh, 18, 1800s, you know. So, so, so what happens is uh, those <laughs> three or four percent uh, larger than the segment can, can cause your problems and I understand why you're recommending uh, that yeah, that just, number is not absolute. No. It's, it's not 2200 is not absolute that's why you like 2500 because of the fact that you do have uh, some slightly bigger ones in it's that got population. some variability there. There is some variability. Now this year's seed quality is better than last year's as far as um, consistency or uniformity yeah it's a lot uh, lot nicer and, and we do check that i mean we have a, a series of screens that we check to see how much variability because i know farmers don't like variability that gets us into lubricants what's your feeling on lubricants you know there's talc and there's graphite well my recommendation is graphite only and until you get them hot humid days and you just feel the moisture it's in that, that and beans you put in there they, they get to sweating and you what i always do is just grab a handful of those beans and hold them in your fist for about five seconds and let them go and if you got some sticking to your hand then it's time to mix in some talc you know because talc is a drying agent that's all it's doing but it is not a lubricant um, you still need to have some graphite in there too but Otherwise, that planter is just going to bridge, and it won't get down to your meter. You're just bridging your hopper. Or if you've got a bulk fill planter, it'll bridge in the manifold underneath. Um, but you got to stir it. you got to put it in, and you got to stir it. You just can't put it on top like you do the graphite. Now, Josh, you're adding uh, titanium dioxide, we call Procoat Plus, onto our seed, which is, in essence, uh, makes the seed slicker. Yeah. So, so in some cases, depending upon humidity, you may not need as much uh, talc or graphite. Uh, well, you may not, but uh, I always do it, especially on a bulk fill planter, because that, you get that, uh, that graphite through their tubes. Mm -hmm. They get that seed to flow a lot easier, a lot smoother, especially on the bigger planters, on the 16 rows, 24s. They got a long ways to push that seed clear out to them end rows. But Turk, Turk, what's your comments on the top graphite and, and one to use, one not to use? What you, what have you found? I agree with uh, um, everything that uh, Josh is saying. The in general, my rule, my recommendation is going to be um, with the uh, with our uh, if if someone is using RC treatment with our uh, our finisher on it, uh, they probably get by with about half what they were using before on untreated seed. Um, in general and and again if you're if it's real high humidity i agree you might need to have some some um, dr uh, talc in there as well uh, because that is that's going to be the number one problem uh, another comment that i do have is that uh, kinsey did come out with a 54 plate uh, um, disc now also uh, to kind of hit that middle of that road on the on the, that's just on the disc that's just on the uh, the vacuum meters, though. That's not on the mechanicals, though, yet. That's just on the 4,000 series meters, yet. Vax meters. The, that's available as well. The uh, on those on those um, um, brush meters, 
Uh, the other thing that's very important is that brush. Make sure that uh, it's not all laying back because if it is, it's not going to do a good good job. And then biggest complaint I've had when I have somebody call and say they're not planting, and I have them look at their meters. Um, if they've got a hook in that in that meter, they need to be replaced. Those plastic uh, discs they need to be replaced because that hook will just not let the bean fall out and it'll just keep going around and around and around. And so that's that's another common problem that uh, that will solve a lot of planting problems uh, when they're saying that they're not getting the, getting the stand that they want. Tommy, I got a question for you, because I know, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, you went out to a customer who had a brand new planter, and it was a Kinsey, and what did you find? Brand new. So when... And this obviously was a mistake with manufacturing, but when the uh, planter, um, brand new planter guy loaded his beans, he was out planting. It was, he was having a heck of a time, couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, he was kind of cussing me on the beans a little bit. So uh, I took the time, went out there, see what's going on. And the the plates, the Kinsey plates were put in backwards um, and everything was just grinding and he wasn't getting anything but fines coming out of the back end. So uh, just always good to check um, anytime beginning of planting season is make sure your plates are on the right side um, and make sure you have the right plates. So that was interesting. That was something that we uh, we both looked at. He, he kind of looked at me afterwards and he, he said, I apologize. Thank you for coming out and looking at this though. I said, yeah. well, I've been changing plates around all spring this year and um, this was the first thing I've checked out. So there's a lot of pressure on farmers right now and, and uh, trying to get things done. And you know how it is, the faster you go, the generally you, you start overlooking the, the simple things. And sometimes an extra pair of eyes is uh, really beneficial. And uh, and that's where, you know, Josh, you have uh, sometimes uh, you have farmers call you and say, hey, I got a problem. What do you think? Don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, we make Josh available the best we can. Of course, he's running the plant, but... Um, he he, uh, he he does have an email address, uh, Josh P at mershmanseeds.com for Josh Patton, Josh P at mershmanseeds.com. So you can email him, or uh, if you can catch him, uh, uh, you know, sometime during the day, uh, he will uh, give you a couple things to think about to keep you going in the field if you can't get your uh, normal guy out there to check it mm -hmm. out. So another advantage of buying some. Uh, seed from Mershman Seeds because uh, not only did he produce it for you, uh, he'll, he'll help you get it in the ground. So uh, the full service uh, company here. So um, I know I know Josh, a lot of times when he's unloading seed, he'll he'll tell them to adjust the combine to our seed growers. You need to do this, you need to do that. So uh, he, he's a real good resource to have in our company for uh, helping farmers out when they have problems. So um, let's uh, shift the talk a little bit now to the weather. You know, that's, you know, they always say farmers are consumed by the weather. Well, we are too, <laughs> you know, because everything in our life is di dictated by the weather, particularly uh, when it's planting time. So, Ben, you know, we went from, in this local area, we went from 80 degrees to 30 degrees in a very, very short time. Um, uh, you know, and I know the farmers are saying the soil is so good. It's, they just can't, can't stop themselves from going out and planting. What's, what do you think now? And of course, you know, we covered everything about our seed treatment last week, and we have to always qualify that our seed treatment is the best that man can make, but Mother Nature still has the final say so. So, locally here, quite a few people have backed off. They stopped planting probably Tuesday. The good majority of everybody, they stopped putting beans in the ground. I don't know of very much corn that's been put in the ground in the past week and a half here, but there are quite a few beans that got put in the ground. Um, I went out, I did digs last night on four different customers, four different fields, and uh, everything is swelled, everything is germinated, everything's dropped sprout, and that stuff was planted, All both of those fields were planted Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday morning. So germination has happened, the most important part of that seedlings germination process has already happened because it already has imbibed the water, it imbibed warm water, it didn't imbibe cold water. Um, so once we get into this, these colder temperatures, that soybean seed is just going to sit there now. So the farmers that did get stuff put in the ground last week and in the beginning of this week, I think 
things are looking very positive in their direction. For the guys that had soils that weren't quite ready yet, we have plenty of growing season left here, and I think by the end of next week, beginning of the following, we're going to see some conditions that are ideal after we get this wide swath of rain come through over this weekend. So um, things are looking positive. I haven't seen anything super negative. I think corn would be a disaster to plant at this point in time, and uh, especially here locally. I think warmer soil temps down south might have been a little bit more conducive, but they're also supposed to be seeing degrees you know 30 degree weather down south so yeah we uh this morning uh it was 42 degree soil temperature in west point iowa at four inches depth now that will move up a little bit uh during the day but you know we're just it's, it's not a really good time to plant right now even iowa state put a bulletin out on friday morning said you know pump the brakes on planting anything and particularly corn uh right now so uh you know, I, I looked at Ag Talk, you know, and they had the same kind of questions, you know, well, I'm going to be okay. I got stuff that's just starting to sprout. And and one farmer said, you know, I'm getting too old to do this. He says, I don't plant for practice anymore. So, in other words, uh, you only get one chance to do this, and uh, and it's very important. And that's what, you know, last episode, you know, we said, hey, it looks okay, and it was okay. But now we're saying, no, it's not okay. We need to wait a little bit. Um, and I, I, you learn, and uh, the critical thing is, like you just said, Ben, do not have that soybean first drink of water be that ice cold water. Yep, 48 to 72 hours is when the majority of the imbibing process happens, and that's when the, soil, the water temperature that is getting pulled in needs to be about 50 degrees and climbing. And from that point, the bean can sit still, like I said. Once once the temperatures drop, it'll, it'll just sit there. Both corn yeah. and beans will act that way, so... I think things are looking positive. Things to be looking for right now to be doing though. I mean, this isn't, it's not like park your sheds and mm -hmm. go drink beer kind of things. I mean, we have a lot of anhydrous that's going on, a lot of pre's. This is a perfect time to be putting your pre's down on your, for your corn and beans because you're going to have half inch of rain hopefully this weekend activate. Um, if there's field work to be done yet, a perfect time for field work because things get all fluffed up when you're cultivating. Get a half inch of rain to settle it perfect back in. Plant. Absolutely perfect planting conditions we're looking at coming in a week, a week and a half from now. So, yeah, so it's definitely a busy time yet, even no matter if you don't have the planter out. Correct. Turk, what's your <clears throat> feeling on, on all of this weather? You're, you're, you're up towards Iowa City there, so you're a little colder. And uh, I know you've had some hail this week. Uh, it's been kind of a crazy week for you. Yeah, we had a little hail. Actually, I seen a little snow yesterday, Joe. Uh, had some snow flurries off and on uh, throughout the day, which was a little bit uh, crazy. But uh, uh, it it's it's definitely uh, uh, people have slowed down and uh, have quit planning that we're planning. Uh, again, field work is continuing. Uh, uh, anhydrous is going on. I've seen guys uh, putting uh, liquid nitrogen down with uh, drops. Um, bagging hoses right on the ground and so they're they're getting some nitrogen out there ahead of that crop which is which is a good get ready for uh planting corn again we've got plenty of time for for the beans but um as we know beans uh, respond very well to early planting as well as long as you can uh, get that stand up and going which uh, our products help you do that but again you can't you you can't uh, fool mother nature you <laughs> It just there's no there's no seed treatment that's going to uh, uh, overcome cold, and uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at uh, for the next week, anyway. Uh, so I think uh, by the, uh, a week from now, everybody will be uh, uh, in a better position. It looks like the forecast area for that's going to be in a warming trend, and uh, that's what we're looking for to put that crop in the ground. You know, Turk, I always ask the. Uh seed treatment people, they said, you know, they always ask me, what, what's your dream seed treatment? And I said, well, I want a seed treatment that we can plant the seed anytime we want. We can plant it in the fall when the conditions are good. We can plant it in early spring, and then we have an app on our phone, and we just push the button when we tell the seed to start germinating. So, in <laughs> other words, it would send a signal out there and tell the seed, okay, it's time to germinate. So, then in situations like this, we can keep planting because we just tell the seed to wait, not try to germinate until, until we push that button. We got a ways to go before we get that product. Would still push that button too quick, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. right. Get another bushel of yield. Turk, anything else to add? I think everybody is um, finishing up trying to get uh, everything fine tuned in the shop. 
which is good. Uh, we're uh, we're all still under uh, quarantine for uh, the COVID virus, and so uh, uh, this gives us time to self quarantine in the shop and make sure everything's ready to go and uh, make sure all your inputs are in place and uh, get everything fine tuned because uh, again we want to take advantage of these planning windows when they when they do present themselves and make sure everything is ready so i think that's going to be the focus for the next week is making sure that everybody is ready to go and once that weather breaks we'll be uh, off to the races well tommy i want to let you wrap up this segment and and you know i i know that now that you're home and with your dogs and and wrigley is the featured dog today the big the big dog and uh uh, one of the things I know that uh, my son Jeff and I think you, since you're a, car, a Cub fan, I almost said the bad word, a Cub fan. Um, uh, I think you, uh, I think Jeff, I know has watched the Cubs win the World Series. I think three times now in the last uh, week and a half, and uh, so that's been pretty exciting uh, to uh, uh, when you're not working. But uh, so uh, tell us, tell us what uh, what's been up in your area. So uh, yeah, the uh, I've been seeing they've been running the reruns of the Cubs World Series every Saturday morning. It feels like so it's something good to wake up on uh, after you watch your cup of Joe. No, Joe, it looks like a pretty robust storm is going to come in tonight, Saturday night, and and kind of wreak havoc all the way through Sunday. Uh, parts of Northwest Iowa could see you know up to eight eight inches of snow. Uh, we, we're going to see some snow down in our area here in Southeast Iowa, maybe a little trace, nothing accumulating. But I'm with what Ben and Turk said. You definitely want to hold off on planting anything uh, right now for at least another week. I think um, uh, a week from next Monday here is going to be pretty uh, exciting times for planting. A lot of things are going on as far as field work. A lot of anhydrous is going on. A lot of seed deliveries are being made. I was out into a, a customer in northern Illinois Tuesday, and uh, there was actually corn being planted in Freeport, Illinois. So uh, uh, point that out there but anyway we we kind of signed off on the meeting and we didn't know how to not shake our hands so i told told him that you said you just want to give a thumbs up and a smile and that's good to go so i uh uh it's a it's a little bit awkward out there with the quarantine and everybody's trying to be safe and and take care of themselves but um a lot of things to do a lot of things to uh get ready for the spring here we got uh we got another week and a half to hold off on planting here. So just hold on. We know how important it is to get that seed come up in uniformity. You know, I think uh, uh, Kevin Falls said it best last week when he said a poor stand never improves. And uh, like the guy said on Ag Talk there, uh, he's tired of practicing on planting. He might as well just do it right the first time. So hold off here for a week and a half on this, on planting soybeans and corn and watch those soil temperatures this week. This weekend's going to be a heck of a storm, though. So uh, we're going to have some places that are going to get an inch of rain, and some places are going to get a half inch, and some places down south may get two to three inches. So keep a lookout. We don't need to uh, uh, have replants slowing us up on the spring. That's most important time of the season for uh, uh, that seedling, right, Ben? Well, we'll wrap this segment up by saying, you know. I agree with you, Tommy. It kind of feels funny this year. You know, it's here we are, uh, Easter tomorrow, and, uh, you know, we can't even go to church. You know, it doesn't seem right. So, uh, but anyhow, uh, uh, all of us are getting through it. We're learning, and we're going to be better because of it. Uh, so uh, we'll finish up with corny jokes, but um, one of the things that we're going to ask you today, uh, Alex, our producer and photographer here, he says, why not get some of the folks out there to send their corny jokes in be, you know, as long as they're PG rated, uh, we'd be okay. Uh, but send them in to me and, you know, at my email address, and it's uh, joe m at mershmanseeds.com, joe m at mershmanseeds.com, and uh, we'll feature them on the air. So I thought since it's going to be Easter uh, tomorrow that we would uh, focus on some Easter jokes, okay? What kind of bean can't you grow in a garden? What kind of bean can't you grow in a garden? jelly bean okay how does the easter bunny keep his fur looking so good how does the easter bunny keep his fur looking so good he uses hairspray one more and then you'll turn and turn the tv off i guarantee you uh, <laughs> where does the easter bunny get his eggs 
Where does the Easter Bunny get his eggs? From an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, hope all of you have a, have a happy Easter and hope everybody's healthy and you stay healthy. And uh, please be safe out there when you go out and into the fields. Do the best job that you can because, uh, you know, all of us in this country and many parts of the world are counting on farmers to feed us. So thank you and we'll see you next week. Take care.